What's up troops, welcome back. Ever thought painting tartan is too difficult? Think again. The secret lies in your approach. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to master it. To start off we're going to take some of this Chimera Orange and mix it into a bit of Chimera Thalo Blue and that's going to create this really dark tone. You can see we've already painted on a simple grid over the skirt. And what we're going to do here is just randomly pick a vertical column on the grid and paint it in. Trying to keep a neat edge. We didn't really need the sketch of the grid for this as a lot of it is just going to get covered over. So you can skip that step if you like. Once you have that painted, skip a column leaving it blank and block in the next one. Again, being careful to keep the edges clean so that you get a nice crisp line on the outside of your column. Then you're just going to repeat that for the rest of the skirt, working your way around, skipping every other column. To continue, we'll mix up a fairly dark colour by taking some of this Chimera Red Oxide and adding a touch of black to it. And then we'll use that to paint the remaining blank columns. Being quite careful along the edges as we want to keep those lines as straight and tidy as we can manage. And we'll just repeat that for the remaining columns. Again, don't worry about covering over this grid design. We'll be able to reintroduce the boxes later on. Take the darker of your two colours and use that to paint in equally spaced horizontal lines along the length of the lighter columns. And you want to do that for each of the lighter bands of colour. If you like, you can trace your brush along the darker area in order to help get the line in the correct spot. So essentially you're repainting the grid of boxes, but because the darker area is the same colour as the line, you can only really see the boxes on the lighter of the two stripes. To continue, we're going to create an orange tone by mixing a bit of the Chimera orange into some of the red oxide. We'll paint this into the middle of the lighter stripes, leaving that dark outline around the outside. And you're just going to continue that until you've done each of those columns. Next, we're going to take some of that orange tone and add a bit more red oxide to it so it's not quite so orange. Once we have that, we'll begin to paint in small diagonal lines over those dirty brown boxes. These lines will look like fabric texture, but they'll also change the colour of the boxes somewhat, making them a bit more orange. I find these look better if you make your lines diagonal rather than just straight across the box. So start at one corner and then slowly work your way across to the opposite corner painting tight, thin lines, leaving a little gap between each one. Moving on, we'll grab some of the red oxide on its own, and we'll do a similar thing on the darker stripes. But this time, we don't have any box outline, so we just have to imagine where the box is. And we're going to paint in those diagonal lines as if they fall inside that imaginary box, placing them so that they are adjacent to the brighter orange boxes. Again, you might need to do this over a couple of layers to get a decent paint coverage. Just be careful that you don't add so many layers that you start to lose that fabric effect. Once you've finished that on each column, we'll take the brighter orange colour and we'll paint a thin line down the middle of the darker stripes. Try to relax when you're painting these single lines. If you start to tense up, that's when the brush is going to start wobbling and then you're going to run into lots of issues. So just make sure that you're breathing slowly and paint a line with a nice, confident, relaxed stroke. And then you're going to repeat that for each of the darker bands across the pattern. This one here is a bit awkward because of that staff that's in the way, but we should still be able to do it. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Once you've done each column, we'll keep that same colour and just paint another line, this time running horizontally across the rows with those darker boxes. Again, keeping the line in the middle so that they form a cross over the top of each dark square, just like that. And we'll repeat that again for the row along the bottom. 
again try and relax when you're doing this use a light touch and paint with the tip of the brush using a soft even pressure so that you keep the line the same width throughout if you need to stop and reposition the model that's okay just be careful to start the line where you left off once that's done if you like you can take your darker color again and just clean up the edges of your squares by reinforcing that line you painted earlier you can also correct the edge of those stitching lines along the darker columns just painting over them so that you get a sharper more obvious box shape I recommend just spending a bit of time correcting any edges that look a bit rough. The neater you can make your boxes look, the better that you'll make the final effect. So it's worth putting the time in to correct any mistakes. When you're painting tartan, mistakes also have a compounding effect. So if you make a mistake in one layer, it's probably going to result in more mistakes in the next one. So it's a good idea to make sure everything is neat before you move on to the next stage. Next we'll make a light grey tone by mixing a bit of white into some secret weapon old mud and then we'll add a touch of scale colour caspian blue and a tiny bit of black. We'll use that to paint lines down the centre of the brighter orange boxes. Again trying to use a light touch so that we keep the line consistently thin and straight. This one falls right in the bottom of where two pieces of fabric line up, which is a bit of a ball ache. But we'll just do the best we can and then tidy it up with our other colour later if we need to. To continue, we'll turn the model slightly and paint another line, this time running horizontally across the middle of the rows with the brightest orange box. This one's a little fiddly because of the staff. But if we just reposition the model slightly, we should be able to attack it from a more comfortable angle. And I think we'll need to reinforce some of those lines slightly as the paint coverage was a bit weak in places. Alright, so now we're going to take that brighter orange again and place a dot right in the middle of where the orange lines intersect. You don't need to do this, I just think it adds a nice finishing touch to the lining work. Plus it doesn't take very long so you might as well. And then we'll do the same thing on the grey lines, taking that lightish grey tone and adding a small dot just where they intersect. If you want to add some subtle shading you can take some black and thin it down to a glaze consistency with some water then with hardly any of the glaze on the brush just sweep the bristles down over the surface of the fabric towards where you want to create a shadow so here at the side of the hip where the fabric is curving down towards the cloak and on the other side as well and maybe along the underside of some of the creases too and you just repeat that over a number of layers letting each one dry before applying a new one until you get the level of shading that you're looking for. Alright troops, if you're interested in trying some of my other tartan designs, click one of the videos on screen now. Thank you very much for watching and as always, don't forget to choose life, paint minis.